Ancient Saturn and the Saturnian gods. These days, Saturn can be seen with the naked eye, although it may be difficult for an average person to discern, so it's unclear as to when it was discovered. Early man worshipped heavenly bodies as gods. Myths proclaim we once lived in the presence of gods. These gods were visible powers, often unpredictable and frequently violent. The priestly astronomers of ancient Mesopotamia and elsewhere make clear that these remarkable powers were planets. Pictographs show what is commonly considered to be a sun as a huge disk with a smaller one in the center, often with rays flowing out of it, with a third darker circle superimposed in the center of that. Our sun looks nothing like that. In many different cultures we see a symbol of a crescent with a star in its center. How could this be when there is no star or planet closer to Earth than our moon to form such a configuration? And most importantly, why do so many remote and widespread ancient cultures who most likely could have never been in contact with one another, such as the Sumerians, Egyptians, Chinese, Native American Indians, Mayans, Babylonians, Australian Aboriginals, and many others all tell the same story and draw similar pictures? If these ancient writings were based on valid observations rather than fantasy, then it is suggested that planets were closer to Earth in the past and they moved in a collinear way, meaning that they were lined up as they traveled through space. For observers on Earth, the result was a unified configuration in the heavens, visually dominated by a large glowing planet, theorized to have been Saturn, then seen without its present ring system. The other two bodies in this configuration are believed to be Venus and Mars, with Venus in the middle shining brightly. In many ancient sources, Saturn is called Sun. The usual name for Saturn in Chaldean astronomy was Alap Shamas, meaning Star of the Sun. Diodorus of Sicily reported that the Chaldeans called Kronos, aka Saturn, by the name Helios, or the Sun. And he explained that this was because Saturn was the most conspicuous of the planets. Popular Greek traditions identified Kronos as the alter ego of Helios. Hyginus also wrote that Saturn was called Sol. In the Babylonian astrological text, the word Shamash, sun, was used to designate Saturn and represented by an eight-pointed star in the middle of a disk, or an eight-spoked wheel. If Saturn was always as inconspicuous as it is present, what could have caused the races of antiquity to give Saturn the name Sun, or the Shining One? Ninib was the Babylonian name for Saturn, or at least one of them. Other names include Ninurta, which according to numerous scholars was the inspiration for the biblical character Nimrod. Ninib is said to shine like the sun. Astrologers must have found it increasingly contrary to reason to associate the star that gives us light and life with one of the palest and slowest of the planets. That's where the word Saturnine comes from. It means dark, slow, and gloomy. The Romans named the planet after Saturnus, the god of the harvest responsible for the Golden Age, which is the same as the Greek god Kronos, with a C and Kronos, with a K, often confused with Kronos with an H, the personification of time. It seems through the passage of millennia, Kronos has been infused with Kronos, who has been infused with death, aka the Grim Reaper, due to the fact that time leads to death. This is why separate searches for all of these characters will reveal them carrying a scythe. The ancient Greeks had two words for time, Kronos and Keros. While Kronos refers to chronological sequential time, Keros signifies specific opportune moments. Another noted deity that represents time is Ion, though Ion stands for time unabounded, while Kronos symbolizes time divided into past, present, and future. God and time have always gone hand in hand. It reminds me of the watchmaker analogy, also known as the argument from design, which states, just as watches are set in motion by watchmakers, after which they operate according to their pre-established mechanisms, so also was the world begun by the god as creator, after which it and all its parts have operated according to their pre-established natural laws. With these laws perfectly in place, events have unfolded according to the prescribed plan. Sir Isaac Newton argued that the regular motion of the planets made it reasonable to believe in the continued existence of God. 
Newton also upheld the idea that like a watchmaker, God was forced to intervene in the universe and tinker with the mechanism from time to time to ensure that it continued operating in good working order. Let's dig a little deeper into the many names of Saturn. Before the Romans and the Greeks, the Phoenicians worshipped the god Elis, or El, who was said to have sacrificed his only begotten son. Upon his death, he was deified as Saturn. Other Phoenician Canaanites worshipped Baal, which is also known as Moloch. Ancient Egypt's version of Cronus was assumed to be the god Jeb, but is also identified with Set or Seth. To the Hindus, he was called Shani, or Shani. To the Armenians, Zervan, or Zervan. It can get a little confusing and even controversial, especially to certain religious groups that don't realize they are pagans. But you just need to understand that seemingly all cultures and religions share astro-theological stories that result in the same characters under different names, and since their creation have diverged in slightly varied directions. If you look far enough into this, you'll find that Saturn can represent multiple gods within one system of deities, including Christianity. It is said that Saturn is the god of a thousand names, and is no particular deity, but rather a universal spirit for the entire world that encompasses every aspect of our reality. A few other names and associations for Saturn include, but are not limited to, Jupiter, the Centaur, Orion, Osiris, Dionysus, the Winged One, Adonai, Hermes, Prometheus, Poseidon, Zeus, Thor, Serapis, Apollo, Tammuz, Addis, Hercules, Shiva, Dagon, Rimfan, Azazel, Noah, Jesus, and Abraham. I did say that it could get a bit confusing, didn't I? For a more in-depth study of this chapter, refer to the YouTube channel called Son of Saturn. Link is in the description. Saturnia and Saturn Failure Before Rome was rebuilt in 753 BC, it was known as Saturnia. Saturnia is where the Roman festival Saturnalia took place in honor of the god Saturn. Saturnalia has its origins in an earlier Greek celebration called Cronia, in honor of Kronos. So it is the same thing. The only notable difference was that Cronia was celebrated on the 12th day of Hecatombian, which is roughly the end of July, beginning of August, whereas Saturnalia was held at the end of December. The holy day, or holiday, was celebrated with the sacrifice at the Temple of Saturn in the Roman Forum and a public banquet followed by a private gift-giving, continual partying, and a carnival atmosphere that overturned Roman social norms. Gambling was permitted, and masters provided table service for their slaves. Saturnalia was a celebration and reflection of the lost golden age, when humans enjoyed the spontaneous bounty of the earth without labor under the rule of Saturn. According to Macrobius, a Latin writer from late antiquity who is the major source for information about this holy day, Saturnalia is a festival of light leading to the winter solstice, with the abundant presence of candles symbolizing the quest for knowledge and truth. Celebrated in the later Roman Empire on December 25th at the Dies Natalis of Sol Invictus, which means the birthday of the unconquerable sun, now celebrated as Christmas. The most sacred place in Islam is the Kaaba in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. The Kaaba is a mosque built by Abraham according to Muslim tradition, constructed around a black stone. The Prophet Muhammad designated Mecca as the holy city of Islam and the direction in which all Muslims should offer their prayers. The Kaaba is believed to be the first place that was created on earth. According to my research, once a year, Muslims gather to encircle the Kaaba and walk around it counterclockwise. On the other side of the map in New York, there is an inverted cube in the ground where the Twin Towers once stood. Coincidence? Maybe. Meanwhile, on the flag of Israel, there is a hexagon in the middle of the six-pointed star, which can be interpreted as a 2D cube. Also, observant Jews wear what's called tefillin, or singular tefillah, which are little black cubes inscribed with verses from the Torah. They wrap them around their arms and they wear them on their heads. So what do Muslims have to do with Jews? Well, let's find out. 
The Zahar explains this is the secret behind Abraham binding his son Isaac. Each of us are required to sacrifice our ego for the sake of sharing with others. The Tefillin act like an antenna that draws down a powerful spiritual force that negates and sacrifices the influence of our selfish nature and ugly ego. 99% of Jews have no clue that this is why we bind Tefillin on our left arm. We use the left arm as the left connotes our ego in the negative, Isaac, and the right refers to the soul and the positive, Abraham. Each year, Muslims go on a pilgrimage to walk around the Kaaba in Mecca, counterclockwise, seven times. This is exactly how we wrap and bind our tefillin, counterclockwise, seven times. The purpose of Hajj for Muslims is to connect to the same event of Abraham binding Isaac. Muslims relate this to Abraham binding his son Ishmael. The connection is profound. Only Kabbalah explains the true spiritual purpose. Perhaps this is why the Kaaba in Mecca is known as the House of Allah. Kaaba, and Allah, as we know, spells Kabbalah. And what's all this have to do with Saturn? Well, Saturn has a hexagon on its north pole, supposedly, that can also be interpreted as a 2D cube. An ancient Sumerian cylinder portrays what appears to be a planet with a six-pointed star ring around it. Possibly Saturn. I would also buy that it's a shining sun, bringing us back to the theory that either Saturn was once the sun or another name for the sun. Another connection lies within the name Israel itself. Many scholars, and I mean many, have concluded that Israel is compounded from the names Isis, Ra, and El. You can go against the etymology all you'd like, but this is pretty obvious. So the hexagon, the cube, and Saturn make sense, but I'll admit it's semi-reasonable to be skeptical. People have also connected the black cube worship with a few other black cubes scattered about the world. There is a glass cube Apple store in New York. Apple's logo is already highly symbolic, uh, stands for forbidden knowledge, so the cube is definitely questionable. In the prayer room at the United Nations, there is a black stone. I already know that the UN is crazy, so this is also questionable. They probably sacrifice babies on it. Something eerily similar was shown in the Miley Cyrus video with Big Sean. Here's yet another cube connection with the depiction of New Jerusalem mentioned in Revelations 21.16. Let's look at some relevant books that I found with mentions of cubes. The Shape of God The infinite cube is a concept without any practical value other than a way to visualize the infinite by limiting it. Infinity is a term that is hard to pin down. Time and space can be called infinite, but you still can't pin down just exactly where infinity is. God, the absolute is said to be an infinite cube. There is no place in which God is not present in the infinite cube. The cube unites the tetrahedron and contains it. The cube may be tiled with tetrahedrons. Tetrahedrons may be tiled, infinitely, to infinity, no problemo. Cubes may also be tiled to infinity. The concept of the infinite cube is what is behind the shape of the Holy of Holies and the Kaaba. The Spear of Destiny in the temple where Caiaphas and Annas awaited news of mutilation of the body of the Messiah. The veil of the Holy of Holies was rent from the top to bottom to expose the black cube of the Old Covenant, which is now split along its edges to open out into the form of a cross. The imageless cult of Jehovah was ended. The religion of the open heavens had begun. And my favorite find new dimensions for the cube of space. Check this out. The cube is also a special geometrical shape for the sacred temples of many religions. The cube as the temple appears in the West in the three major religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. In Judaism, the temple that King Solomon built to honor, Yahweh, had for its inner sanctum the shape of a perfect cube. 
The temple itself was rectangular and was divided into an outer and an inner court by a folding partition that served as a door between the outer and the inner. This partition divided the temple in such a way that the inner court became a perfect cube with a dimension of 30 feet. At the exact center of this inner cube lay the Holy of Holies, a double cube lying on its side 4 feet long, 2 feet wide, and 2 feet high. Within the Holy of Holies were the two tablets of the law and a miniature perfect cube inscribed with the name of God, Yahweh. The cubic temple itself is symbolic of the cube of space in all its dimensions, while the Holy of Holies at its center symbolizes the Hebrew letter Tau and the tarot card the world which is both the temple that stands at the center of the universe and the exact center of the cube of space. Masonic lodges also obey this symbolism. They are oblong in shape, with the northernmost part of the lodge extending beyond the other three walls. Three lights shine on the central altar, at east, south, and west, to further emphasize the cubic nature of the inner sanctum of the Temple of Solomon. Thus, the lodge itself is the rectangular body of the temple, while the altar is the inner cubic temple. In Christianity, the New Jerusalem, the city of heaven in Revelation, is also a perfect cube, its length, breadth, and height each measuring 12,000 furlongs. Each of the cube's 12 edges measure 12,000 furlongs, a play on the 12 signs of the zodiac that govern the 12 edges of the cube of space. This celestial cube is the cube of space, as the star map of the sky, in which the elements, planets, and zodiac all have their appropriate stations. This heavenly cube also holds a great mystery in that each of its six faces measures 144,000 furlongs, 12,000 times 12,000. The number 144,000 is the secret symbolic number of souls in heaven. This sacred number symbolizes every sign of the zodiac squared is in heaven 1000 fold. It is thus the number for all souls excluding none. In Islam, the most sacred shrine, Kaaba of Mecca, is also cubic in shape. The Kaaba, derived from the Arabic Qob, meaning cube, was a shrine that predated Islam. It was a granite-like cube-shaped shrine, originally surrounded by 360 pagan idols marking the old measure of the year as 360 rather than 365 days. Muhammad eventually destroyed these 360 idols. The Kaaba is a line so that each corner marks a cardinal direction. Embedded in its eastern corner is the sacred stone known as the Black Stone, which acts like the cornerstone of a Masonic structure. Pilgrims who walk around the Kaaba stone seven times finish their pilgrimage by touching or kissing this sacred black stone. Here again, the cube as the temple becomes a symbol of celestial hierarchy. In this instance, the Kaaba is the central sun, while the wandering pilgrims are the planets, who orbit around the sun. There have been many incarnations of the mystery school tradition in the West since the Middle Ages. One esoteric school, the 19th century secret society known as the Order of the Golden Dawn, is closest in grade structure to the map of spiritual development outlined on the cube of space. In order to understand the initiatory grades of the Golden Dawn, we first need to understand their predecessors. The spiritual lineage for the Golden Dawn is shown briefly in the following timeline, Alchemy, Hermeticism, Freemasonry, Rosacrucianism, Theosophy, and finally the Golden Dawn. Logos, Movies, and Music 
We'll start on logos, but first I'm going to show you the basics on how Saturn symbolism can be found. The symbol for Saturn is composed of a Latin cross and a harvesting sickle. Yes, the cross can also be known as the Christian cross, Greek cross, etc. Notice that two X's can be made out in the seal of Saturn. Once you get a real good look at this seal, you'll begin to notice it all over. For instance, the Masonic square and compass. Unfinished triangle pointing up, unfinished triangle pointing down, and two X's can be made. Speaking of unfinished triangles, if you finish them, we get the six-pointed star. Also, the seal of Saturn is the seal of Azazel, both easily converted into the star. Here's a fox channel with two X's. Exxon Mobile. Also looks a bit like the patriarchal cross. The Kabbalah Tree of Life has within it the six-pointed star and the double X. Nissan, simple Saturn logo. Saturn cars. Here's an interesting one. We take Toyota, which semi looks like Saturn, but for those with eyes to see, we can also make out an owl. If you've done your research, it's simple to find that owls are one of the animals governed by Saturn. Here we go. I made a video about cigarettes and the occult, where I pointed out these traffic cigarettes as double X, but at the time, the in-your-face Saturn eluded me. All you have to do is turn the box. We have DirecTV. This is the kind of simple Saturn symbol that I don't really point out. If you look up Saturn corporate logos, you'll find a video where somebody shows every logo that they could possibly find that has swooshes and half rings like Whirlpool, Burger King, Pepsi. Um, I mean, it's, it's trying to explain that. Look at that, dude. That's Saturn. And maybe it is. And yeah, it's pro it probably is, to be honest. But the thing is, is pointing that stuff out is kind of like, for beginners, they're going to be like, uh, I don't think so, dude. You're fucking tripping. So anyway. Sometimes it's just put out there, like Sega Saturn. Looks a lot like the Orphic Egg, also known as the Cosmic Egg, World Egg, and Mundane Egg. It's in many ancient creation myths. Here's an ad for Sega Saturn. Head for Saturn. This one is my favorite. It's my personal belief that the elite do this to toy with people. They will zone in on names to use for specific causes. This is how I see this ad. Up on the top left hand corner it says Ice Cube on Saturn. All I see is Cube on Saturn. In his hand is the console looking like a cube. I believe in coincidences, I've just never seen one. So now we have the GameCube. You can immediately connect this with the star of Saturn. You can also immediately connect this to the G that's in the middle of the Masonic Square and Compass. And here's what Wiki says about the G. Varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but widely accepted as God, or the Great Architect. Here's something I found in a recent book called The Grand Illusion. The G in the emblem of the Freemasons represents the Grand Architect, and if you relate this to God, or Saturn, for example, who is depicted with a white beard as Father Time, or Death, in the same manner as Jesus, and all the other Saturn, Sun Gods, it is therefore appropriate that the Grand Architect in the Matrix movies had a white beard. He also sat in a circular room with televisions that monitored the lives of every individual in the same way God is omnipresent, or how Santa, the man with the white beard, associated with the Celtic God Odin, can see you when you're sleeping, or how he knows when you're awake. Anyway, Gateway Computers, we got the cow cube, and that's like, kind of hints at a bull, hmm. And finally, here's a website called blackcube.com. Their front page says, a select group of elite intelligence community veterans that specializes in tailored solutions to complex business litigation challenges. Again, hmm, go check that out, that's a crazy website. Now let's run through some movies. A few of the following images were found on this website, hollywoodsubliminals.wordpress.com. 
We have this Tesseract Infinity Stone, aka Cosmic Cube, Space Cube, and so on. It's in a few of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Captain America, The Avengers, Thor, and also mentioned in The Guardians of the Galaxy, Iron Man 2, and S.H.I.E.L.D., the TV series. This website has way more references than I'm going to show you, but they pretty much mention any movie with a hexagon in it as well. A couple examples would be this Spider-Man and Cabin in the Woods. Got the honeycomb, you know, 2D cube, whatever. You know, everybody can make what they want from it at this point. And you're not, you know, but it could be a reference to the cube. There's only so many shapes and people are going to use them, knowingly and unknowingly. Moving on. This is one of my favorites, the Allspark from Transformers. Let's listen to a little bit of the intro to the first Transformers movie. The things Optimus is saying are relevant. Before time began, there was the cube. We know not where it comes from, only that it holds the power to create worlds and fill them with life. That is how our race was born. For a time, we lived in harmony. But like all great power, some wanted it for good, others for evil. Here's an Argus Cube from the movie Super 8. There's a bunch of them, and they're parts of spacecrafts that assemble together, kind of like programmable matter. It's also interesting that the movie is called Super 8, being that 8 is relative to infinity, which is relative to Ouroboros, which is relative to Saturn. We'll get into that in a little bit. Here's Le Marchand's box, aka the Lament configuration, which acts as a door, or a key to a door that leads to a hellish plane of existence where demon-like creatures reside. An ongoing debate in the film series is whether the realm accessed by the Lament configuration is intended to be the Abrahamic version of Hell, or a dimension of endless pain and suffering that's original to the Hellraiser films. We have the Data Cube from the movie Prometheus, honorable mention. Any Star Trek geeks in the house? Star Trek The Next Generation! Good, well then you'll remember the Borg and some of their ships being cubes. Borg are a collection of species turned into cybernetic organisms that function as a hive mind called the Collective. Here's a Borg ship passing by Saturn. Interesting enough, Saturn is called Sol 6 in Star Trek, meaning Sun 6 or Sixth Sun. Here's my other favorite besides Transformers, Sauron from Lord of the Rings. Not only is Sauron strikingly similar to Saturn in name, but the title Lord of the Rings gives it away. Sauron is a giant eye, and supposedly the south pole of Saturn resembles a giant eye. Looks like the CBS logo as well. And finally, fantasy and sci-fi movies have their own award ceremonies called the Saturn Awards. Teen Wolf from Masonic Television won one. Now let's go through some music and see some of Saturn's influence. Jimi Hendrix, South Saturn Delta, The Kren, Dreaming Saturn, Last Autumn's Dream, Saturn's Skyline, The Band, Rings of Saturn, Dante, Saturnine, with a MK Ultra Monarch Butterfly, Luke, Les Enfants de Saturn, which means Children of Saturn, Forgotten Tomb, Under Saturn's Retrograde, No Doubt, Return of Saturn, Zoroaster, Voice of Saturn, Son of Saturn, The Saturnine, The Ghost of 313, the Saturn Return, Saturn Dust, Django Django, Born Under Saturn, Michelle, Saturn's Rings, Goldie, Saturn's Return, here's a weird subliminal in Mike Jack's Escape album, Paul Weller, Saturn's Pattern, Prophets of Saturn, Saturnalian Temple, Saturnian, Saturno. Oh wait, this one's not a rock band. Saturno by Capital Initial. 
Saturnus, Saturn and Ascension, Brave Saint Saturn, the Korea, Saturnus, and Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath has to do with Saturn worship and people have been arguing for centuries whether Saturday or Sunday is the Sabbath. Here's a page from a book called Saturday or Sunday, which is the Sabbath? Is Saturday the seventh day, according to the Bible and the Ten Commandments? I answer yes. Is Sunday the first day of the week, and did the church change the seventh day, Saturday, for Sunday, the first day? I answer yes. Did Christ change the day? I answer no. James Cardinal Gibbons, Archbishop of Baltimore from 1877 to 1921. Fraternity Saturni. The Fraternitas Saturni, FS, the Brotherhood of Saturn, has become known to English readers through fragmentary descriptions which emphasize the sensational sex magical aspects of this lodge's work, or else its darker, more satanic side. This is understandable in the light of the fact that the FS is, or was, the most unabashedly Luciferian organization in the modern Western occult revival, and its practice of sexual occultism perhaps the most elaborately detailed of any such lodge. The FS represents a unique blend of astrological cosmology, neo-gnostic demonology, sexual occultism, and Freemasonic organizational principles. This grand synthesis was originally the vision of one man, the longtime grand master of the FS, Gregor A. Gregorius. Now let us look at some other material that I gathered on the Brotherhood of Saturn. The OTO itself gave birth to a number of offshoots and rival movements, such as the Fraternitas Satani, the Fraternitas Rosa Cruciana Antica, the Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica, the Typhonian Current, and the Ordo Templi Orientis Antica, a breakaway branch formed in 1921 which focused particularly on sex magic and voodoo. Ordo Templi Orientis OTO, Order of the Temple of the East or Order of Oriental Templars is an international fraternal and religious organization founded at the beginning of the 20th century. English author and occultist, Alistair Crowley has become the best known member of the order. Another organization, similar to the OTO with its Masonic structure, philosophy, and origins, is the FS, the Fraternitas Saturni or Brotherhood of Saturn. According to Eldred Flowers, who wrote about this group from a sympathetic point of view, it is the most unabashedly Luciferian organization in the modern Western occult revival. Like the OTO and much of the Masonic literature, the FS also places considerable importance on Gnostic terminology and concepts. Flowers made frequent reference to Saturn Gnosis and specific sexual rituals were described. Saturn Gnosis is the teachings of the Fraternitas Saturni, or the Brotherhood of Saturn, a German occult group dating from about 1930 and continuing after World War II. One essential feature of the Gnosis was the sex magic adjustment of coital positions to match planetary movements. The Saturnians and Gregor, A. Gregorius. The beast was a goat who spawned a thousand young sects and orders based on Crowley's system, or inspired by it, have been numerous in the latter half of this century. The most stable and continuous of the groups independent of Crowley's direct legacy is the Fraternitas Saturni, FS, Brotherhood of Saturn, led from 1927 to 1963 by Gregor, A. Gregorius, whose mundane name was Eugene Crosscher. THFS appears even more eclectic than Crowley's systems, and it seems also to embrace the traditional symbols of darkness even more enthusiastically than the beast did. Saturn and Ouroboros Sometimes the Ouroboros is related to Saturn and some people don't know why. Well, in some depictions of the god Saturn himself, he's holding an Ouroboros. Let's refer to some books for a better understanding. 
In Roman mythology, the Ouroboros was associated with Saturn, the god of time, who joined together the first and last months of the year like a serpent swallowing its own tail. Saturn swallowed his children, and, with his scythe, symbolized the devouring of life and mortality. In Renaissance Europe, Saturn continued to be associated with the Ouroboros, and his scythe became symbol of death. This association continued into more modern times, and the Ouroboros came to decorate numerous Art Nouveau calendars. In the cemetery, a snake biting its own tail is a symbol of immortality, rejuvenation, and eternity. It is seldom used in funerary art nowadays, but it was a very popular symbol in 19th century cemeteries. Images of the Ouroboros can be found in the art of ancient Egypt, where it symbolized the daily cycle of the sun, China, where it was among the myriad, in and young symbols, the Roman Empire, where it was associated with Saturn, the god of time, as well as in European and American funerary art. The dragon with his tail in his head is the Ouroboros, a symbol of Saturn. The Greeks knew Saturn as Kronos, a name that means time. The legend of this god is that he ate his own children. The Ouroboros is an image of the perpetual process of creation, destruction, dispersion, and assimilation of forms that animates the universe. The purpose of the great work is to rescue the soul from this fate. That is, to free her from the lending and borrowing forces that would bind her to unbalanced shells that, subjected to time, are perpetually devoured by Saturn. To pass beyond time is to achieve hard it. Saturn and Satan I've been told a few times that Saturn is Satan, but with no explanation. We all understand that the two words sound similar or have the same letters, you know, Saturn, Satan, but that's not good enough for me. I wanted to know why Satan was related to Pan and Sir Nunos and how they relate to Saturn, so I did some digging. Here's what I came up with. Marduk was the Roman god Cronos, whose name means the Horned One. Artists often depicted Nimrod wearing a crown of bull horns. Cronos was also the Roman god Saturn, who devoured his own sons, as soon as they were born. Eusebius recorded, the Phoenicians, every year, sacrificed their beloved and only begotten children to Cronos, or Saturn, and the Rhodesians often did the same. Saturn also serves man in the role of Satan, the tempter. When the vibrations of Saturn Satan combine with an egocentric personality, people often trade their souls for material possessions and temporal powers. In this respect, Saturn is symbolic of the structure of values which lead to evolutionary growth. Thus, Saturn is the bridge between the forces of universal consciousness. Sometimes, Saturn is referred to as Rex Mundi, the king or prince of the world. Jesus is also known as Prince, and when you look at other depictions of Saturn, the god is viewed as Father Time, and later as the Grim Reaper, because of his influence and control of time. Thus, human aging and the destruction that is brought about in the life and death of every living organism. Father Time is depicted with a long white beard, in the same way as Quetzalcoatl, and other deities like Jesus, Zeus, Kronos, etc. And from the name Saturn, comes Satan, and Santa, who is depicted with a long white beard. If you tilt the planet Saturn on its side, you get one of the most ancient symbols of the Sun, a circle with a dot in the middle. Since Saturn is in the astronomical house of Capricorn, it is also associated with the goat, and thus Saturn or Satan, is depicted with horns in the same way as the bull and goat gods. Satan translates to adversary, and in the Old Testament was the name of an agent of God, sent to test the faith of believers. In that context, many people believe Satan, or Satanael, to be an angelic figure, one doing God's will, and not a fallen angel. 
Satan has been liked with many figures in Judeo, Christian, Islamic, and pagan mythologies, including fallen angel Lucifer, the snake in the Garden of Eden, the beast of the Apocalypse, the Islamic Abyss, the Roman god Saturn, the Greek Pan, the Celtic Sinunios, and the Devil. Capricorn was the house of Saturn, the most evil and wicked of all the planets. He is called the Great in Fortune, and all that part of the zodiac within the signs of Capricornus and Aquarius was under his dominion. Saturn was also known as Chronos, or Time, which destroys all things, and, in the poetical and allegorical language of mythology, devours even his own children. The figure of Saturn with his scythe, is to this day, an emblem of decay and death. The Sun, therefore, when he entered Capricorn, passed into the house and under the dominion of Saturn, or death. There's also a book called Saturn, A New Look at an Old Devil. That's worth checking out. And supposedly Saturn has a moon called Pan and another called Ceres that looks just like the Death Star. And I did say supposedly. Saturn, CERN, and time travel. So we've connected Saturn to Sir Nunoz, and it seems that CERN is a wink to Sir Nunoz. Saturn being the god of time, it would make sense if the people behind it are indeed occult-minded, which seems the case. In CERN's logo, we can spot three sixes. On TV, we're seeing CERN-like machines with the capability of time travel. Anyone who has ever done the proper research would understand that Hollywood and mass media is but a branch of social engineering that often uses predictive programming. So what is CERN up to? It's mostly speculation, and I've yet to research it enough to really know, but with a machine, or machines that big, the chances of a huge event that affects our reality go up a little bit. For more videos on the subject of CERN and time travel, check out Truth Media Revolution. As I mentioned in Chapter 1, Son of Saturn has Saturn videos packed with information. I had to watch all of his videos twice or more, but it was worth it. Thank you, Son of Saturn. And thanks everybody else for bearing with me. This was uh, three weeks in the making. This was honest research from a non-religious and unbiased observer. I'm not pushing an agenda, and I'm not a shill or satanic just because you may not agree with my research. I'll leave you with one last fun fact. In palm reading, the middle finger represents Saturn.